Luke over there just smirking. All right, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, for the Lewiston City Council meeting. Uh, the council is going to be going into an executive session for the 6 p.m. portion of our meeting, but we will be returning for a public session at 7 p.m. And I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilor Jensen, seconded by Councilor Joy. Please call the roll. Mr. Mayor, can you just? Yes. Could Ms. Ray. The... Sorry, I keep jumping in. Could we state the um, reference so that we know why we're going into executive session? Yes. Uh... Sure, I have it right here, Mr. Mayor. The motion is to enter into an executive session pursuant to Maine Revised Act as annotated Title I, Section 403. Five subsection six e to discuss a legal matter. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk, and thank you, Councilor Ray. Uh, so we have a motion by Councilor Jensen, seconded by Councilor LaJoy. Please call the roll. Councilor from Ward Seven. Yes. Ward One. Yes. Ward Two. Yes. Ward Three. Yes. Ward Four. Yes. Ward Five. Yes. And Ward Six. Yes. Motion passed by vote of seven to zero. Okay, thank you.
Christy, I can raise my hand on this one. Oh, come on. Just a reminder to all uh, counselors that we are live. We are broadcasting right now, so if you could please mute your microphone. And Matt, if you could remove the screen when you have time. Thank you. All right, I was just counting everybody to make sure everybody was here. Uh, so we're live now recording. Okay. Uh, so good evening, uh, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, business meeting of the Lewiston City Council. I just have uh, some brief announcements. Uh, Thank you for joining us this evening. A few quick items. The session will be conducted remotely and, the, and council members will only participate electronically. For those viewing online, please ensure that you join this meeting using the following website, lewistonmaine.gov slash 2020cc. If you join this meeting using any other link, you may have trouble connecting properly. We encourage you to log out and then rejoin the meeting using that website. And again, that's lewistonmaine.gov slash 2020cc. This website address is also located at the top of our meeting agenda on the city website. Public comment on any item appearing on the agenda could be sent to public comment at lewistonmaine.gov prior to or during the meeting and all comments received would be forwarded to the city council. Members of the public who are logged into the meeting online can make comments when invited to do so using the raise your hand button, which is in the lower center of their screen. Once they are acknowledged, their microphone will be unmuted and, they will be able, and then they will be able to make brief comments. Speakers will also need to make sure to unmute their mic as well before making comments. Counselors are asked to raise their hand to make a comment. And uh, now we'll move to the COVID-19 update, if any. Dale, you're muted. Um, just a couple of things. City Hall continues to operate as we've discussed before. People entering Park Street, exiting Pine, wearing face masks. We have greeters there to kind of um, uh, regulate the number of people on each floor to, 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 to institute, you know, the social distancing that we need to do in lines upstairs. Um, the other thing that's occurred um, is that the armory has been, the shelter at the armory has been shut down. Um, they vacated last week, um, cleaned the facility on Monday, 
disinfected on Monday, and we've gone in and inspected for damages both Monday and Tuesday, um, and we'll be reporting to the city administrator on the status of that facility. In general, it looks looks quite quite good. Okay, thank you, Dale. Uh, the next item is introduction of the 2020-2020. I had a question on that update. If possible. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so I, I suppose this is perhaps more for Ms. Monteo. Um, Madam Clerk, could you just update us how the COVID-19 election went last Tuesday night? Uh, sure. Thank you, Councillor. We uh, had uh, a 30% voter. I'm sorry, let me back up. We had a 20% voter citywide turnout for that election. Of the voters who voted, 70% voted by absentee ballot, 30% voted by uh, in person at the polls, which equated to about 1,600 voters at the polls at Longley. Of course, we consolidated at Longley. Uh, the flow seemed to be great from our perspective in the sense that it allowed our election workers to maintain the cleaning. <coughs> We're trying to wipe down the voting booths after every voter or just about every 15 or so minutes, every voting booth was wiped down. Um, voters didn't have to stand in line too much. Uh, and so it's really thanks to the citizen election workers who stepped up and volunteered and uh, worked at the polls. So we were pleased overall with that, but I'm happy to answer any questions, Councillor. Thanks. I just, I wanted to congratulate um, everyone on getting the word out about absentee ballots and how that was the safest public health option um, if people were able to do that in time. So uh, thank you for all the efforts that your office put into this. Yeah, I think I've heard from several folks, including uh, an email today, uh, congratulating the clerk on uh, her efforts through this election process. So thank you, Councilor Ray, for bringing that up. Uh, Dale, if you can bring in Dottie and uh, reference to our next item, it's uh, an introduction of the 2020-2021 Lewiston Youth Advisory Council. And I will share with counselors, uh, I'm still having an issue with uh, my computer when a screen is put up and I think uh, we're going to be putting up a screen. So fingers crossed that I don't freeze up like I have for the last couple of weeks. Well, hi, hi Dottie. Dottie. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me with you. I'm going to try my uh, hand at putting my screen up, and I'm supposed to have a button that says share. And if you can just introduce yourself and give you a title. Yes, I will. Um, my name is Dottie Perrin Whittier, and I'm the Community Relations Coordinator for the City of Lewiston. And I also have the privilege of being the advisor to the Lewiston Youth Advisory Council. And this is the uh, meeting during the year when we have young people come on to the Youth Council and we have returning members as well. Uh, some of them are watching this evening. So hello to everybody out there. And I do have a PowerPoint to go through to show who's coming on, some of their thoughts from their interviews, and also uh, to say thank you for the three outgoing seniors. And I don't think you can see my screen yet. I'm supposed to push share, according to MIS, but I don't see a share button. Matt, can you bring that up? Absolutely, I'll bring it up for you. Yep, the little green button is not here. <laughs> Ooh, okay, thank you. All right, I am gonna go through this and it does say share screen now, Matt. Should I click that or just leave it? You can just leave it, I'll take care okay. of it. Just tell me next. Okay. Uh, the Youth Council is now in its 18th year. It was established in 2001 by the City Council to give young people a voice within the community uh, to undertake initiatives and projects that would benefit the City of Lewiston and also to help them interact with officials and learn more about uh, municipal government. Uh, next. I wanted to thank the outgoing seniors this year. I, I have uh, Carolyn Adams, Lilith Price Wharf, and Fazla Karim. I took those pictures on my phone uh, because I didn't get to the graduation this year, uh, but uh, really proud of all of them. They're all college bound and just were wonderful additions to the Youth Council. Carolyn uh, was with us all four years of high school. Next. Uh, how were the appointments that you're going to hear about tonight made? 
Uh, every spring, we do promotion through the school's social media, press release, email blasts, uh, youth focus places like Tree Street, The Root Cellar, and we put information on the website. Uh, we also reach out specifically to principals and counselors at schools. We have an online application that is submitted. And this year, our interview panel consisted of counselors Pettengill and Jensen, who are the council liaisons to the youth council. Uh, two youth council uh, folks that are returning are chair and vice chair, Hope and Katie, and myself as advisor. Next. The first new person is Alyssa Netto, and they all sent in pictures this evening and something that they wanted to say to all of you. Um, she says she's getting, you, getting the opportunity to help her community, thanks to being on the youth council. Next. The next person is Adey Abdi. She sent in this picture and she said, this will be a fun way to learn about Lewiston and the people who live here. Next. Elena Clothier, a new menier who was member who was extremely well-spoken. Uh, it was really a great interview as it was with all three of them. Uh, she says, Lewiston is a fascinating place with a lot of untapped potential. She's particularly interested in how the arts can help Lewiston uh, be uh, more of a destination place, not can inspire the community and how she can make a change at the local level. Next. And these were some of the topics that came up for those three new folks that were interviewed. Again, interested in public art to enhance Lewiston's reputation, communicating statewide what Lewiston has to offer, Again, the Dirty Lou reference is, is not popular with the Youth Council, and that was a concern. Another topic was reducing the stig stigma between the downtown and other sections of the city, uh, ways that people can get to know each other, truly know each other, uh, being more accepting of all sides of an issue, assisting refugees and immigrants with resources they might need, and also mental health and coping with stress. Uh, especially during this time of COVID was discussed in their interviews. And these thoughts of the new three folk, the, the new, the three new folks will be brainstormed along with the returning members at their August orientation. And then collectively they'll decide what they want to tackle first. Next. Returning member is Hope Rabito, who was chair for this past year that's ending. The year goes from July to July. She said she applied to the Youth Council in hopes of creating change in her community, making a difference in her life and that of others. She loves her city and wants to be closer with it and has found the Youth Council to be the foundation for that connectiveness. Next. Katie, she has been the vice chair. Uh, she is a returning member. She joined because she wanted to develop a more positive image for Lewiston and she wants to be uh, involved in that positive image, creating that. Next. Damon, he sent this photo in and he said this will be his third year serving on the Youth Council and he wants to actively serve his community in positive ways with his peers. Next. This is Riley, who some of you might also recognize as Lewiston's Youth Poet Laureate. She is a returning member she says she likes Lewiston due to its integrity as a city. It says it's a vast community with beautiful scenery across various locations with immense diversity. And she believes Lewiston has something for everyone. Next. Emily Fournier, returning member. She says she loves being part of the Lewiston Youth Advisory Council because everyone brings a different perspective to the topics we discuss makes her happy to be part of a great group of people working together on what's important to us in the community. And I really agree with her comment. Um, we've been around for 18 years and we've had uh, homeschoolers, we've had debaters, we've had cheerleaders, we've had athletes, and we've been really, really fortunate that youth have really gelled from all different work, walks of life. And Councilor Jensen was on the Youth Council years ago and I think he can speak to the fact that young people in this particular group have really worked very well together. Uh, next, Ariana Valley, she's a returning member. She says Lewiston is a great place. 
and she wants to show others what there is here. Next, and thank you, Matt, for flipping this for me. Uh, Bree Matthew is another returning member. She likes Lewiston because of the community. She wants to serve because she wants to continue helping to bring the community together and again, uh, decrease the dirty Lou reference. Kira Potman returning. She loves Lewiston because she says there's so many things to do around here. She mentions going out to eat at a local restaurant and then going to a sports game. We're not too far away from the beach or the mountains and she wants to help change Lewiston's negative perception from people who don't live around here. Next. And we have 14 members in all, just to let you know. Julia Paquette, returning member, she likes serving on the Youth Council because she says she's part of a bigger voice for kids in Lewiston and is able to make a difference. Next. Olivia Deshane, she's a returning member. She said Lewiston is an environment in which many ideas, diversity, and cultures come together and form a strong sense of community. And she feels it's a place where people can find opportunities to flourish. Next. And the last young person tonight that we're highlighting, uh, Cadence Neto, she's a returning member. And she said that Lewiston has given her the opportunity to meet new people and become involved with helping the residents of our city. And then the very last slide, uh, what's next in August, um, we're going to be having the annual day long orientation, obviously with social distancing and safety precautions. Uh, we'll be doing team building activities. Uh, every year we have uh, presentations from city staff, an overview of municipal government. One that's particularly popular is Lincoln or Misty from Economic Development does an overview of the growth and development in the city. We also have leadership training, which is two hours in the afternoon. And then they start brainstorming the topics that the, the new folks um, had to say that I shared earlier. And then the returning youth will share what, what they think is important to going on right now. And they decide together what they wanna tackle first. And then at that orientation, they will set their first meeting date. So those are the 14 for your July to July 2021 year. And uh, thank you to Councillor Pettengill. We were just going to run up their names and he said, nope, I want to see their faces and see more about them this evening. And that's how the PowerPoint came to be. So thank you for that. Anybody has any questions? Sitting there, or am I gone? All right, so thank you, Dottie. Uh, very nice presentation. I'm sorry I wasn't able to see it all, but I did look through it earlier today. Okay. All right. Any uh, questions for Dottie? All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the next item is uh, acceptance of the minutes for June 16th and July 7th, and I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll point out that Councillor Jensen did have his hand raised, I think, for the Youth Council uh, update. Okay, uh, and I'm pulling up. I, you know, so when I came back on, my participant list wasn't there. So go ahead. Uh, well, I see Councillor Clement's hand raised. I was prepared to make a motion on the minutes, uh, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Jensen, did you have anything you wanted to add? You're all set. I apologize. All right. Okay, uh, motion made by Councilor Clement. Well, my motion would be whether or not we can combine the two meetings or does the clerk wish a separate motion? I'm prepared to move after viewing both sets of minutes that we accept them as published and move from there. Yep, I'll entertain a second. Second. 
Also, we lost Councillor Pattengill. Okay, uh, go ahead, Councillor Jensen. Oh, Mr. Mayor, I just noticed that it looks like Councillor Pettengill has moved to the attendee section. Welcome back. Hey, thank you. All right. So there was a motion made by Councillor Clement and seconded by Councillor Jensen for the uh, to approve or accept the minutes of June sixteenth and July seventh. Uh, if you didn't hear that, Councilor Pettengill. Uh, and Madam Clerk? Sure. Uh, Councilor from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. And Ward 6? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're at the point uh, for public comment period. Any member of the public may make comments regarding issues pertaining to the Lewiston city government. Uh, a maximum of three minutes per speaker uh, with a maximum uh, for all comments at approximately 15 minutes. Uh, these are for items that are not, or these are for items that are not on the agenda. Do we have anyone who would like to make a public comment? Okay, seeing none, seeing none, roll call votes. All roll call votes for this meeting will begin with the Councillor of Ward 7. Thank you. And agenda item number one. Item number one, confirmation of Mayor Kayer's nomination to fill the current vacancy in the Ward 2 position on the school committee. To receive the Mayor's nomination and to appoint Elgin Physic to fill the vacant Ward 2 position on the Lewiston School Committee set appointment to be effective as of July 21st, 2020. Okay, thank you. Dale, if we could bring uh, Mr. Physics in. Okay, so uh, counselors, I think, I think uh, everyone has seen uh, the application. And I just, you know, briefly, I just want to, uh, state that I've uh, spoken with uh, Elgin uh, since I chose, uh, chose to nominate him. Uh, I find him to be, you know, really welcoming, uh, great demeanor. He's kind of a voice of reason that I think he'll add value to the uh, Lewiston School Committee uh, to hopefully add to the, the great work that uh, is being done there as well. Uh, Elgin has a long history of uh, public service to our community, including a veteran of the Iraq War. He currently serves as a law enforcement officer with the state police. Uh, but more importantly, he has a long history of service to children, both in uh, Lewiston and outside the area. Uh, he has children within our school district, and I think that's important as well. Uh, and I. Uh, I, I actually am I'm, I'm proud of making this appointment because I truly uh, think that sometimes it's, uh, it's good to appoint people who have uh, just nothing but the best for our students and for the residents that he'll be representing uh, on the Ward 2 uh, school committee. So Elgin, would you like to say anything before the council? I open it to the council. Uh, yep, um, I think you hit, hit all in the head. Um, again, I, I, I stepped up because I think there's a need um, um, for someone like myself on the board. Um, like I, I've been in, living in Lewiston since 2004. Uh, I've been doing youth programs and mentoring youth since 2010, 2011. Um, so I'm very enrooted um, on the ground, um, working with our youth um, who have a lot of potential and, um, and some of them have already done great things um and hopefully um more to the future and hopefully i can do something to work together with our school board to improve our schools all right thank you uh so at this point i'd probably open it up for a motion and then open it up for council discussion mr mayor who i'll move that mr mayor council clement mr mayor i move we as a council receive your nomination and appoint Elgin Physic to the Ward 2 vacancy on our school committee. Councilor Khalid, did you have something? No? Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Moved by Councilor Clement, seconded by Councilor LaJoy. 
And I'll turn it over to the council for any questions or comments. Councilor Jensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and Mr. Fizik, am I pronouncing your name right? Yes, uh, you, you, can go by, you, you can just call me Elgin. I'm not, I'm not big into titles. I'm like a first name basis kind of guy. Okay, hey, fantastic. Um, well, in that case, uh, Elgin, so um, constituents have reached out to me by phone and email to support your nomination. I've heard a lot of good things and not one negative thing about you. Uh, people in my ward have reached out to me, people in your ward and from other wards as well. Um, so it's been an awesome sign. And doing my own research over the last couple of days, I'm very comfortable with you joining the school committee. Um, you're very involved with the youth in our community, especially with Tree Street Youth, just you know, right down the, the block from me here. Um, you have a strong reputation in town. It, it's important. Um, and we want to keep confidence of the community in our elected institutions. Um, and as a former member of the school committee myself of three years, you know, um, it, it does take a lot of dedication. It's not easy work. Um, a lot of it is you have a lot of information, stuff that the public doesn't even know, and you have to make the right decision for kids at every single point. And it's not always easy. Um, I'm pretty confident that, that you'll be fine. So honestly, I don't have any questions. Um, I would just a couple pieces of, of advice is that next year's budget is probably going to be a pretty tough one. Um, so just I mean, start as early as you can on that. And um, then also the uh, public schools financial situation. Um, I very much think that we have an unfair funding formula for, for service centers like Lewiston. Um, there's a big issue of withholding of Title I funding where the state withheld millions from us. Um, there's also the issue of any time that our school district, you know, when we expand our schools, we have to pay for that locally through through, through bonding and borrowing. Whereas um, if you do a new school, you know, the state will pay a big cost of that. And so um, the state funding has not been fair and that Lewiston's had to pay a lot of those extra costs where ideally the state would have just given us money because we're one of the few districts that, that are actually growing. Um, so there's a lot of financial issues like that, that Lewiston doesn't get a fair shake. And so Finances are pretty stressful for the district. So um, I know there's a lot on the academic and the programming side too, but I guess my spiel right now would be uh, keep an eye on the finances. Um, but I will be voting in favor of you and I'm very excited to see you join the school committee. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilor Jensen, Councilor Pettengill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, thank you for El Elgin for uh, stepping up. Um, a lot of the folks that I've had an opportunity to talk to have done nothing but uh, sing your praises. Um, so I'm very excited to, uh, to support the nomination to have you represent us on the school committee. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Clement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've not received quite as much communication on this issue with the school as the last one. Uh, if we had, uh, <laughs> we're, we're talking in the home run here. But everything I've heard uh, is very positive. Uh, I'm sure with your background, Elgin, that uh, you're going to bring a proper perspective to the school committee. Uh, we share much of the same background, uh, as the mayor may have mentioned, as he does. And I think it's an excellent background. The fact that you've worked with our youth, I look forward to having you as part of our team. And all together, we continue to move and make Lewiston a much better place. Thank you, and welcome aboard. Thank you. Councilor Ray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, to Elgin, I just want to say, echo my fellow councilor sentiments, and since we um, will likely be serving together once we get through this vote, um, just wanted to welcome you and also take a moment to say your work with youth in the community has been lauded in, in a multitude of, multitude of venues. Um, and then just to um, the mayor, um, there were a lot of process questions having to do with this nomination. Um, and so I just wanted to first ask a question if I could, and then um, if you would be able to um, explain your process. The first question was, um, and I know the answer to this, but um, the charter uh, defines different uh, ways to fulfill offices for the office of counselor versus the office of school committee. When will the charter be looked at again was a question that came up. So I believe a charter uh, commission will be formed next year for a review for our decade, annual decade review. Kathy, can you add to that? Is that correct? Yes, yes I believe that is correct, Mr. Mayor, yes. Great, thank you. And then it, Mr. Mayor, if you had a moment to kind of explain how you went about this process, I think that would be helpful. Sure, uh, so like you said, it is different to uh, fill a, school a vacant school committee than a counselor or a vacant mayor position uh, where 
if it, I can't remember the time frame, but if it's uh, an extended time before an election, you'd have a special election. But in the school committee, uh, it's always by nomination of the mayor and confirmation of the council. Uh, the process that I used through consultation with our city clerk was to uh, open it up for uh, the public to apply any any uh, sort of or registered voters from Ward Two who are at least 20 years old, uh, and I appreciate that uh, that advice uh, from Kathy because I was weighing how I wanted to approach this, and I, I uh, I'm grateful that we had that conversation because it did kind of change the direction that I wanted to go in. Uh, so we opened it up for a five day five day period, which some may consider short, but uh, I believe there's a lot of pressing issues before the school committee right now. And uh, from having discussions with the chair, there were gonna be some items that hopefully would wait until the appointment was made for the uh, Ward 2 position. Uh, but more importantly, I think I felt that I, you know, a week's time was enough to get enough applicants and that I would be able to, uh, uh, consider those fairly and uh, make a nomination in that time frame. So that's the general uh, process that I went. I think I shared with folks uh, in an email, you know, kind of what I was looking for as mayor, and it was really quite simple. Uh, it was, you know, my goal was to place somebody on the committee that would work well with others, had a good demeanor, had a reasonable voice, and was open, uh, had an open mind. I was hoping to find somebody who was apolitical uh, and wouldn't bring politics to the table. Uh, so that, that's just a couple of things. I had listed some other things, but I can't recall them now. Uh, but more importantly, I just wanted to find somebody who could be a team player uh, because we have way too much happening in our schools right now to uh, have uh, committee members. And even at our level, on the council level, we don't need to be button heads. We need to be finding solutions and finding ways to work closely together. Uh, and that's not always easy. I mean, we all know we've served, all of us have served in roles. Uh, and I, I feel strongly Elton uh, is gonna come to the table uh, with that demeanor uh, on day one. So I'm looking forward and I think you will enjoy work with them, working with them, Alicia. Thank you, I appreciate that. You're welcome. Uh, Councilor Khalid. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a question and then a comment. My question is, traditionally in a situation like this, do does the mayor, um, of course makes you know, the decision, but does the mayor traditionally share the applications with the rest of the council or no? No, uh, so the nomination process is uh, I take application, and Kathy, please jump in after I, I if, if you need to correct me. Uh, Applications are sent to the mayor for consideration of nomination. Uh, and if the mayor shared all the applications with the city council, at that point, you're kind of, you, you know, you're, you're taking, you're turning the nomination and process over to the council because every individual council would review all the applications, make an opinion in their mind. And it may be difficult sometimes to work through that nomination process that way. I do believe though, the mayor has a lot of discretion in how he does it because the charter isn't clear. So Kathy, can you just share if I kind of follow past practice and in the reviewing of the applications? Sure, yes. How you described it, Mr. Mayor, is exactly how it's been done in the past that the uh, applications would come into the mayor's office, the mayor would review the applications and then present one name for nomination uh, to the council to decide and to act upon, yes. Thank you. Um, so a comment, um, I congratulate Ms. El um, Elgin for his nomination. I'm, I'm very excited in that he will definitely bring a unique um, perspective to the school committee. So congratulations after, you know, we voted, I guess. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Any other uh, questions or comments? Uh, and uh, Dale, once the vote's done, don't pull anyone out of this yet, because I just have a quick uh, comment for Elgin, okay? Uh, seeing no questions or comments, call the roll. Council from Ward 7? Absolutely, yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. Ward 6? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0.
All right, thank you. So Elgin, if you could uh, connect with our city clerk sometime tomorrow uh, to get sworn in, and then probably the first order of business would be to connect with the chair of the school committee. And she's already asked for your contact information. So I'll get that to her after our meeting. Excellent, and thank you. All right, thank you, Elgin, very much. Okay, with that uh, completed, agenda item number two, please. Item number two, order authorizing the city administrator to execute a collective bargaining agreement with the MSEA unit. Requested action to approve the order authorizing the city administrator to execute a collective bargaining agreement with the MSEA unit. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Council Array and who, who gave the second? Yes. Councilor Jensen. Okay. Uh, and Dale will be presenting on this. Mayor, um, this is a very simple one. It's a three-year contract retroactive to July 1st, 2020. Um, that would extend through June 30th, 2023. Um, like many of the contracts that you've seen, and I think we even um, gave you a preview of this one about a month ago, um, the Kohler adjustments are 2.5, 0.5, 2.5, 0.5, 2 .5, so 3% a year. Um, the only other substantive change, other than just some minor editorial changes, um, there's a simple reclassification request process that mimics one of our other contracts that really tries to mimic the ProTech. Um, I don't have experience with this reclassification process in the current contract, but um, Dennis has indicated to me that it is very cumbersome and the ProTech one is much cleaner and it'll be better for both parties. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think I got a motion again. Uh, so Madam Clerk, two things. Uh, so on the appointment of agenda item one, I forgot to check for public comment. I did quickly check before we left and I saw no hands up, but don't hesitate to jump in and remind me on that. Uh, and on this item, I'll entertain a, we have no motion on this, right? We do have a yeah. motion. Okay, all right. Councilor Ray and Councilor Jensen, yes. Very good, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from the council? Okay, to the public. Back to the council. Seeing none, call the roll. Councilor from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. And Ward 6? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Okay, thank you. Agenda item number three. Item number three, order authorizing the city administrator to execute a collective bargain, bargaining agreement with the professional technical unit, AFSCME Council number 93, local 3855-00. Requested action to approve the order authorizing the city administrator to execute a collective bargaining agreement with a professional technical unit. So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Jensen, and I'll turn it over to Dale again. Uh, similarly, a three-year contract from July 1, 2020 to June 30th, 2023. The same Kohler adjustments as in the, the other contract, plus the contracts you've seen over the last few months. Um, there is some language clarifying um, a practice. There's a two-hour minimum call-in um, when employees are called in outside of the workday. When those abut against the workday, um, there have been uh, multiple practices and it just clarifies how that two hour conflict um, interacts with a normal workday. Um, we are removing the city engineer and pulling him up into the management core at Public Works consistent with um, last year we did a, a, a re, um, we adjusted the ordinance for the structure for Public Works. This is consistent with that. Um, there's some other title adjustments and then just some minor editorial adjustments. Okay, thank you. Any uh, questions or comments from the council? To the public? Back to the council. Seeing none, call the roll, please. Council from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward three? Yes. Ward four? Yes. Ward five? Yes. Ward six? Yes. Motion passed by vote of seven to zero. 
Thank you. Agenda item number four, please. Item number four, order authorizing the city administrator to execute a collective bargaining agreement with the Public Works Unit, AFSCME Council number 93, local 1458-00. Requested action to approve the order authorizing the city administrator to execute a collective bargaining agreement with the Public Works Unit. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilor LaJoy, seconded by Councilor Clements. And Dale, I think we'll be presenting on this as well. Yeah, this is a, th a third contract and I believe the last one in the package of collective bargaining that we have. Um, so this will be the last one you'll see for, for three years. Um, again, three year contract, July 1, 2020 um, to June 30th, 2023. Same COLA, same cost of living adjustments we've talked about before. There are a couple other elements in here. Um, again, the same language, clarifying the call out language where it abuts up against um, a normal workday, exactly the same as the last contract, same language, um, clearing up that clarification, clearing up that inconsistency. A um, couple things added here, um, similar to water and sewer, this um, will add um, an ability for highway and open spaces to have a call out person. That call out person will receive $200 a day, but is required to answer the phone when called. This will minimize a call going to Public Works Dispatch, that dispatcher getting a two hour call in, then just simply to call out a highway worker to go triage the project and then call in supervisors. This will take that middle piece out. The highway worker will respond directly. If that highway worker can uh, manage the issue, if it's a limb in the road, or if it's a catch basin that seems to pop off, there seems to be a bunch of those in the heat lately, um, they'll be able to just replace that, um, correct that safety issue, and then move on instead of having multiple calls um, and a delay and additional expense. It is that additional expense of $200 a week for, for an individual on a rotation, um, but we think over time that'll um, either um, equalize in savings or um, may even have a greater savings over time. Um, there's uh, one other element, um, a simplified overtime policy. It's only a couple words on here, but it's actually taking a 12 or 14 page overtime policy with multiple, multiple iterations as a supervisor is trying to figure out who they have to call out to respond to an issue. So it's really limiting that down to a single list and six or eight steps, hopefully um, resolving the issue with the first step or two. Um, it also moves a little bit away from seniority and working on a rotation, which will give some of our younger um, new employees a little more access to overtime um, and spread that out a little more evenly so we can invest in some of those younger people and bring them along as well. And then the rest is just minor, um, minor editorial adjustments like the other two. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from the council? Uh, to the public, questions or comments from the public? Back to the council. Seeing none, call the roll. Council from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward three? Yes. Ward four? Yes. Ward five? Yes. And ward six? Yes. Motion passed by vote of seven to zero. Thank you. Gender item number five, please. Item number five, order applying for accepting and appropriating a community solutions grant created by Maine Housing and authorizing the city administrator to execute the required grant agreements. Requested action to approve the order applying for accepting and appropriating a community solutions grant from Maine Housing and authorizing the city administrator to execute the required grant agreements. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilor Gelinas, seconded by Councilor Jensen and uh, Link will be presenting. Good evening, Link. Good evening, uh, glad to be here. Uh, this is some of the background work that needs to occur to put together a competitive choice implementation grant, which we're expecting uh, the feds to put out a, a request for proposals or notice of funding availability, uh, probably this fall is what we're hoping for. Uh, we have been preparing for this though, since, uh, since last year when the council adopted the choice neighborhood uh, planning grant. 
uh, you know, the recommendations of that. Uh, this is, uh, at this point, Lewiston Housing Authority is going to be the lead organization. The city will be a co-applicant on it. And John Anton has been a consultant working with them. They have incurred a fair number of soft costs needed to really put together a competitive application. They're looking to uh, expand the amount of housing, expand homeownership in the neighborhood. There's a lot of planning, engineering, environmental type work that needs to be done. These are third party uh, costs that you really can't fund from the, either of the choice uh, funding streams. When they talk to Maine Housing, they said we've got a, uh, a program called the Community Solutions Grant, and they encouraged Lewiston Housing Authority to apply. John Anton wrote the application, but under the rules of Maine Housing, uh, Lewiston Housing Authority cannot receive the money directly. It needs to go to a municipality. We would then pass it on through to, uh, to Lewiston Housing, who would then use it to uh, fund these various contracts they've got helping us get to a competitive choice grant. And so the request before you is to uh, authorize the city to apply for it and authorize Dennis to, uh, to uh, sign all the necessary documents associated with it. All right, thank you, Link. Any uh, questions or comments from the council? If not to the public. Seeing none, back to the council. All right, call the roll, please. Council from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. And Ward 6? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Okay, thank you. In and out in five <laughs> minutes, Mike. Not bad. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, gender item number six, please. Item number six, order authorizing the city administrator to sign a letter of donation and release of agency obligation form related to a slope easement at 195, 223, and 229 River Road. Requested action to approve the order authorizing the city administrator to sign a letter of donation and release of agency obligation form related to a slope and fence construction easements at 195, 223, and 229 River Road. So moved. Okay, moved by uh, Councilor Clement, seconded by Councilor Jensen. Uh, and I think Dale's presenting again. Yep, um, this is one of two projects. You acted on a similar project, an attached project, um, several months ago, don't, um, agreeing to donate permanent and temporary easements along um, over by the quarry where we dispose of material. Um, there are two projects. The one begins, and the one we're going to talk about tonight, begins at Alpha Port Parkway and extends um, up River Road to um, Razzle Way. The one you acted on previously um, begins at Razzle Way and goes to Mount Hope. These two projects are highway reconstruction or highway rehabilitation projects. Um, they um, are uh, federalized projects, so it's a 90-10-10, 90% fed, 10% state, um, and then 10% us. Um, in agreements that DOT writes today, um, right in the agreement, it talks about municipalities donating property as part of the project these older agreements, um, they didn't do it in the original agreement, they did it by these donation forms at a later date. Um, there are about 0.2 acres along um, where Public Works has its operation center and it's just a strip taking. Um, most of it is um, permanent rights, but there are some temporary rights just so they can um, functionally do their work. Um, and again, there'll be three agreements that uh, the deputy administrator will have to sign for the three properties, but um, it's donating 0.2 acres of a strip easement that doesn't affect our operations will allow this um, project to move forward. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from the council? If not, uh, to the public. Back to the council. Call the roll, please. Council from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. And Ward 6? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Thank you. If we could bring in uh, Chief O'Malley, agenda item number 7, please. 
Item number seven, order authorizing application and acceptance of funds from the U.S. Department of Justice Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant Program. Requested action to approve the order authorizing application and acceptance of funds from the U.S. Department of Justice Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant Program. So moved. Moved. Okay, moved by Councilor Jensen, seconded by Councilor Ray, I believe. Thank you. Uh, Chief? Yeah, this is a uh, federal grant that we apply for every year. Uh, this year we qualify for a little over $26,000. Um, we use this money to buy equipment, uh, train the officers, um, tasers, computer programs, things like that. It's, it's not a huge amount, but every little bit helps and we need to get city council approval so that we can apply for this grant. Okay, thank you. Any uh, questions or comments from the council? Councilor Ray? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Chief, um, just, I, and I apologize that I didn't reach out with this question earlier, got caught up with a lot of constituents this weekend. Um, is any of this money able to be used for either um, exploring the body cameras that were passed in a resolve or other training um, in the most recent resolves? Uh, we would have to get special approval um, for the body cams. You'd have to go through, that's a whole separate part of this grant. Um, it's really not meant to supplant funding that you're already going to spend. Um, it's in, in the, uh, the grant guidelines that it has to be above and beyond what you were planning on doing. Um, perhaps 2021 grant, we could look into doing that, but right now I couldn't do that. Okay, thank you so much. And, and just to clarify, so this one's supplant because it's not budgeted, right? If, and I realize there's not much money here for body cams, but... It, that one, we wouldn't be considered that we're already authorized paying for that. So that would be a new item if we are able to apply for other grants? Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments from the council? If not, to the public. Back to the council. Call the roll. Councilor from Ward 7? Yes. Word one? Yes. Word two? Yes. Word three? Yes. Word four? Yes. Word five? Yes. And word six? Yes. Motion passed by vote of seven to zero. Thank you and thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, reports and updates? Councilor Ray? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got a lot of notes, so if you see me looking at my monitor and notes, I apologize. Um, so the school committee has been um, continuing to meet a lot. Um, we, so what's the date? On July 15th, we named interim superintendent Jake, Lang Jake Langless um, to that post. Um, I, it's my understanding that tonight's meeting that the school committee held um, had two appointments featured as part of it. So knowing that, um, Mr. Langless was previously the high school principal. We, I assume they are appointing um, the interim high school principal, Gus LeBlanc, who was the principal at LHS from 06 to 13, um, went off to Lee Academy and is um, now coming back for an interim position to help us out. Um, additionally, a, a permanent position of assistant superintendent was to be discussed tonight, and the nominee for that was Karen Papet, who is our chief academic officer. Um, I don't know how the vote worked out because I've been here the whole time, but um, as soon as I find out, I'll email the council. Um, a couple other things that have come up yet. Um, the, well, the school budget, of course, passed on July 14th, so I want to thank everyone who went out and um, took the time to research it and then vote for it. Um, and then we have a meeting scheduled for July 27th, but there's not an agenda yet. Um, potential things, um, so I, I know you all saw the July 13th meeting was postponed due to safety concerns. Um, and that was uh, scheduled for the school resource officer discussion. As far as I know, that has not been rescheduled because we aren't yet able to resolve those safety issues. Um, additionally, there will need to be a vote for chair. Currently, um, the vice chair has been acting chair, but um, according to the procedural rules, there has to be a vote. So that's upcoming. Um, again, I don't have dates on any of that. There is a meeting scheduled for the 27th, but I don't know that those things will appear then. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Clement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if I might direct a question to Councilor Ray, from what I've just heard, 
and I have difficulty. I don't know if it's on my end or whatever, but the voice uh, goes in and out like uh, there's almost a broken wire in a mic or something. But uh, there is no insight yet as to when the school resource officer issue will be coming up on the agenda. Is that correct, uh, Counselor? Can I, could you repeat that one more time and trying it without my mic? Okay, uh, there, you, do you have any insight as to when the school resource officer issue may be coming back on the agenda for the school committee? Again, we have a meeting scheduled for July 27th, but I do not know that the safety issues raised that caused us to postpone will be resolved by then. As soon as I know, I will let folks know, and I'm sure the public um, will be playing, paying close attention to that as well, but not currently, no. Okay, I would just ask that uh, you notify us as a body as soon as you know. Ask that the school put this up on their website and also that the city put it up on theirs. There's a tremendous amount of uh, interest in the issue. And I know a lot of people will be terribly upset if they are not informed as to when the issue is going to be taken up again. Thank you. Any other uh, reports or updates? Okay, seeing none, uh, agenda item nine is other city business. I'm sorry if I'm doing your job, Kathy. <laughs> okay. uh, so uh, any other city business counselors wish to discuss? Councilor Jensen. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I didn't wanna bring it up during the nomination, but I think it would be wise of us to um, add to our procedural rules how uh, school committee appointments should go. So I know over the last like five school committee appointments that's happened in the city. They've been very, very inconsistent, sometimes not always fairly to the nominees. So I think it would be in our best interest and for the interest of our residents, if we kind of, and we don't need like an ordinance, but just put in our procedural rules, maybe like a time frame for nominations, like the process of how it's gonna lay out. So it's consistent, clear, no issues down the road. Yeah, I think that's a good point. So I, Dennis, do you think that we should workshop that or? Sorry, too many mouses going on here. Um, I think that that would be appropriate to, for us to, uh, you know, maybe staff can put something together um, with some outlines of, of, of suggested uh, procedures, hearing that feedback, and then I think a workshop would be appropriate to discuss. Yeah, and I, th I think a workshop would be quick and, and fairly, I, I I'm assuming it'd be a fairly quick workshop. So, okay, that's a good idea. Uh, Councilor Clement. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I sent an email this afternoon late to the administrator, deputy administrator, and copied you on it. I would like to see perhaps a workshop item having to deal with uh, the EMS issue that I mentioned in that email, response times, availability, and that sort of thing. I think it's, uh, it's something that directly impinges upon public safety, and we probably ought to discuss it. Okay, and I think uh, I, I did have a conversation with the city administrator today. He was going to plan on reaching out to you and just having some further conversation. You've noted that, though, Dennis, for a possible workshop. I have. We Thank will certainly you. add it to the list, and we can schedule that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Councilor Ray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just in response to Councilor Jensen's ask, I think it's um, – probably wise to have a procedure, but I do wonder um, if it's bound by charter and charter is intentionally vague might be an implication. Um, just so, I mean, I, we can talk that through in a workshop setting, but um, I, I would be under the belief that charter sets um, the precedent and then the mayor, whomever that happens to be at the moment, makes that choice. Um, as much as that stinks, um, Councillor Jensen, that would just be my opinion. Go ahead, Councillor Jensen. Yeah, yeah, um, I apologize if there's any confusion on what I said too. So um, I guess the process that I'm talking about is not any of the mayor's responsibilities. So once the mayor makes the appointment, they can, according to the charter, they can, they don't even have to take applications like, like Mayor Kerr did here. They can just make an appointment. Um, but um, so I think what I'm talking about is the procedures for when the mayor makes the nomination and we're like at the council meeting, like agenda item number one, all right, start. So at what point, like what process do we use from that point? So um, it wouldn't be um, stepping over the mayor's powers. Um, it would follow the charter exactly. Um, yeah, so I, I apologize if I wasn't uh, clear about that. 
Thank you for that. That helps. All right. Thank you. Anything else on uh, other city business? So I have, uh, I just want to, you know, about a month ago, we talked about, you know, whether or not we wanted to start considering bringing meetings back into the chambers. So I just want to throw that out there again. Is this something we want to discuss? Mr. Mayor. Councilor Clement. I'm not sure just what the current guidelines are and how chambers would uh, coincide with the guidelines as to size of uh, meetings and that sort of thing. I think we have to take a look at that situation, but uh, I'm really ambivalent about which whichever way we go, really. Uh, but I, I would want to make sure that if we do go back to chambers, that there is sufficient uh, consideration given to the public if we have, like, like we have had recently, a couple of hot button issues come up that we can accommodate people that do want to come in and speak. And it, it appears to me over watching some of these things over a period of time that people are really more apt to come out in person than they are to try and ring in on Zoom or by telephone. So uh, I think that's an important consideration as we move forward. I thank you. Thank you, Councilor Ray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would um, encourage us to continue to meet via Zoom. Again, not an ideal format or forum. Um, however, uh, in the interest of having the public participate, I think it's um, easier and safer for them, as well as us as members, um, knowing that maybe a number of us fall into higher risk categories as defined by the CDC. I would encourage us to continue with this format um, and then I would just reference that we had to reschedule a meeting um, for the school committee, much to many folks chagrin um, because of those public health and safety issues. And so I, I wouldn't want to see the same thing on this side. Okay, thank you. Councilor, Councilor Gelinas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just wondered if, you know, if we are moving away from a complete Zoom, if we ever think about that, could we go to a hybrid model where there's a little bit of both going on? And does this, I mean, our, cha you know, our chamber council chambers are small, is there opportunity for us to think about a different venue so that we can socially distance? And, you know, I just, just trying to think outside the box a little. Dennis, do you have any response to that? Um, I, know, I know it's off the cuff, so I- No, I, it, it's fine. Uh, very upfront, we, we have not looked at another venue. Um, I think that we, you know, that's something we could look at. I would just say with the council, chambers now um, and the size that we have, there's no issue obviously getting us, uh, the city council and staff appropriately socially distanced in there and being able to spread out uh, to meet all the regulations. But uh, you may recall just before we went to Zoom, we did conduct a meeting within the chambers and just having to have the chair spaced appropriately six feet apart really limits our public participation um, capacity it just very significantly. So there's other ways uh, to answer Councilor Gelinas's question about, you know, yes, I suppose we could do a combination um, of some, some Zoom and some um, in person, but I have heard and I've not experienced this myself, but I've heard that that is awkward to say the least at times and just not, um, it's not the best, uh, I guess it's either when I, my, the advice I've received is all or nothing, all on Zoom or all face-to-face. -face. That'd be my recommendation. Okay, thank you. Councilor Pattengill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so Councilor Gelina stole a lot of my thunder. I was gonna ask about um, if a change of venue um, would make it easier to facilitate that. Um, so I, I won't ask that question. Um, I, I'm part of the, the high risk crowd with my asthma. Uh, but I, I do think that us going all digital, um, we've lost a lot of the, the process in how the, the council meetings work. It is very difficult to have discussions uh, from counselor to counselor with this. Um, and you know, it, there's an air of lack of transparency with this. Um, I know I, I've felt it as a counselor, constituents that I've talked to have felt it, it's, it's out there in the community. I, I do think getting back to in-person meetings uh, will benefit the council as will the public. I understand the concern, um, but that, that's part of why we, why we step up and serve. Um, 
So that's that's my piece. Okay, thank you, Councillor Khalid. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I I do um, continue to recognize that the COVID cases in Lewiston, um, where we even had this past week a close family um, of mine passed away because of COVID at a very young age. So. We really need to be very cautious of um, getting back to the chambers. And if we do get back to the chambers, then we need to be looking at the um, at the cases in terms of if, if Lewiston is decreasing or if, if Lewiston um, COVID cases are rising. Thank you, Councilor Jensen. Did you have something? I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's mostly been said. Um, I'm ready to go back personally, kind of like a lot of what uh, Councilor Pettengill was saying. It's extremely frustrating doing it this way. A lot of the process gets lost and it's just, it's not been beneficial. So I'm ready to go back, but at the same time, understanding we can't really do a hybrid model. Um, you know, I'm, I'm okay waiting if, if people on the uh, council want to wait, but I am very much ready to go back. Okay, thank you, Council LaJoy. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I fall in that same category as uh, Councillor Pettengill. Uh, I am somewhat high risk, uh, but I do feel strongly that we should get back to a face-to-face -face, uh, type meeting uh, where we're all together in one chamber and we can confer uh, with each other if we have to. Um, I am worried somewhat about the attendance of individuals uh, that would like to attend the meeting. Um, I don't know how we could figure that out uh, unless we we broadcast in the further room that we have downstairs uh, on the screen and and they'd have to come towards the front uh, to speak or something like that. Uh, I know in the legislature what we uh, have done is when the room has been uh, occupied by a uh, the, a large number of individuals uh, per fire code, uh, we have them wait in the visitor's room. And um, when it's ready for testimony, we have them come to the uh, mic and, and do the testimony. So maybe those are things we could look into. Uh, but I, I also feel strongly that uh, we've got to get back there. And, and uh, I think it's important. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Ray. I just had a question and I think it might be for the city clerk. Um, so last Tuesday during um, the election in person, um, were you able to mandate folks to wear a face covering inside the building? We could not, but it is because they were there voting and their right to vote superseded um, the requirement to wear a face mask. So we were specifically instructed by the Secretary of State's office that we are not allowed to require face masks at the polling place. And so in the situation of possible public attendance at a public meeting, does their right to participate as a member of the public supersede their, uh, the mandate to wear a face covering? I don't know the answer right now, but we'll be happy to clarify that and get that information back to council. I don't know offhand. Thank you. Good question though, thank you. So- and, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, if I could just elaborate also, I'm so sorry, there was a uh, suggestion about change of venue. I just wanted to remind the council that all of our camera equipment is not portable. It is hardwired into the chambers. The cameras are mounted into the ceiling. The city does not own any portable uh, cameras and tripods. So to broadcast the meeting live uh, or even to videotape it and broadcast later, we don't have the current technology to do that just as a reminder for folks, thanks. But we do, so thank you, that's a good point. You kind of uh, blew my thunder here because I was going to suggest that we look at the Omri. Uh, but with that said, we do have the Great Falls TV and we pay money for that every year and we rarely use it. Uh, so with that, we'll, we'll, so two questions, Dennis and Kathy, feel free, feel free to chime in. Uh, would the Omri be a possibility or is that going to be used in the near future for rec any type of record programs? And would Great Falls TV be a possibility for uh, at least recording and playing at a later date type of thing? So, yes, um, I can jump in and um, Kathy can clarify if need be. Um, for, as far as the Armory, we are looking at, uh, you know, the recreation program getting started back up. 
Um, so in terms of a conflict, potentially, yes, that there's a potential that exists with other programs, just don't know offhand right now, you know, obviously we'd have to look at specific dates, uh, but that programming is getting going. Um, you are accurate about Great Falls TV and the ability to record um, the meeting uh, in that it would have to be aired at a later date. I'm not aware of any capability for us to do a live broadcast to, to, to uh, the city clerk's point um, at, a, at another venue. So, um, so we would have to, um, you know, record and then just, you know, play, play the meeting later, um, uh, you know, on YouTube. It would be able to be uploaded to YouTube and, and Great Falls TV like normal, but it would be at a later date. So if the council's okay with it, I guess I'd just like to ask Dennis to, to either, you know, assign a staff person or himself, really kind of look at options out there that might be available to us. Uh, and I'm not talking about spending two weeks, you know, just give it some thought and, you know, investigate some options on recording, double check with Great Falls TV, because I think they've done some live broadcasts, haven't they? Or am I, am I remembering wrong? No, Kathy's saying no. Well, they, they can't uh, live broadcast the inauguration for us. They always record it and broadcast it later. Okay. So yeah, if you could just put in some type of document for the council to kind of look over our options at this point, I think that'll help us make a decision uh, easier. Council okay with that? Okay. All right, anything else uh, in reference to agenda item nine, any other city business? Mr. Mayor, there's an attendee with their hand raised. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bannister, uh, can we, yep, there we go, he's in. If you could just unmute your mic. Good evening, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Uh, on this issue, I just wanted to suggest, or uh, I've had events at the junior high, and they do have the audio-visual capability, and I think they have a link uh, that you would use similar to this that you can they can broadcast out and you can click on it and view but I wasn't allowed to do that but um, it's, it's the internal Wi-Fi allows it to get out of the building from my recollection so just a thought great thank you sir and thank you for that catch Councillor Ray uh, so seeing no further comments I'll entertain a motion move to adjourn second Moved by Councillor Clement, seconded by Councillor Jensen, Madam Clerk. Councillor from Ward 7? Yes. Ward 1? Yes. Ward 2? Yes. Ward 3? Yes. Ward 4? Yes. Ward 5? Yes. And Ward 6? Yes. Motion passed by vote of 7 to 0. Okay, thank you very much, Councillors and staff.